Our final topic under development life cycle focuses on change management. I want to stress here that we understand different companies will have different change management conventions than the ones we're presenting here. As we saw in the admin section of this class, each time a component is saved, the revision number is incremented along with who changed it. This is displayed in each component's revision history, meaning every process, component, and profile has its own history of what was changed, when it was changed, and who changed it. Atomsphere provides the ability to roll back to a previous revision, but you need to be careful. One reason you might do this is if you change a process, a profile, or a map, and make a mistake, you would roll back to before the changes were made. When rolling back, you need to make sure other processes and components are not relying on the newer configuration. Keep in mind that rolling back an atomsphere will not delete any other components referenced by the newer configuration. And as we just saw earlier, in the Component Explorer, the Show Where Used feature will display all components that reference a given component, and this is helpful when doing an impact analysis. Now we look at Component Source Control. Atomsphere is the source control engine, and so there is no external management no import or export of files. The intent is to have a single copy of the process and components that represent the latest, greatest version. Making copies of processes or components for the sake of source control or versioning is discouraged because it clutters the environment and it makes it difficult to determine which copy of a component or process to reference. If needed, use the revision history to roll back. All users work with the latest revision. And users do not have their own individual copy of the entire code, but instead contribute changes. Everyone is working on a shared process using the latest and greatest process version. There's no trunk branch concept where you can spin off a copy of the code, make changes, and then merge it into the trunk. Instead, everything is contained in one copy. As a graphical configuration tool, there's no automated way to merge differences between revisions like you might in traditional text-based development. You can view differences, but you cannot merge them. When working in a development team, there are a number of considerations to be aware of so that you don't step on each other. It's important to understand the Build tab is a shared development environment. Everyone on the team is working on the latest and greatest source code version. In Enterprise edi Editions, there is a component locking feature similar to a check-in, check-out feature that helps to prevent concurrent editing. Without this, you could have two people editing the same process at the same time, and whoever saves last wins and overwrites the other's changes. With component locking, a component is opened in read only. So if you want to make a change, you need to obtain a lock on the component. Once you save the component, the lock is released, and someone else is free to work with it. Even with component locking, we do stress team communication and coordination, which is important in any development project. A best practice is to establish component naming conventions and folder organization. Each developer should have a sandbox folder where they can explore functionality and build out proof of concepts before incorporating these into common development folders. Finally, 
each user should install a local Atom for test mode and local debugging tools. An Atomsphere environment is a dedicated deployment setup that supports different phases of the integration development lifecycle. Environments are logical deployment containers intended to model traditional lifecycle stages. The development, where end-to-end -end testing is done by the development team. A test environment, where a QA team and perhaps some key or super users perform end-to-end -end testing. And then production, which houses live production processes. Environments enable change management, allowing you to run different versions of the same process simultaneously and to avoid making copies of processes and components. For example, you could have version 1 running in production while version 2 of the process is being tested. Once the process is created and working to your satisfaction, then it's time to deploy. When you deploy a process, it creates a snapshot of the process and the components at a given time. It takes the current revision of each component and bundles them together into a single deployment version. The process is then deployed to a specific environment. The deployed process version is separated or isolated from any subsequent changes to components that occur in the build tab. The process must be redeployed in order to publish any new changes that are made in the build tab. Some processes need to be deployed and scheduled to listen for real-time requests, and these cannot be tested in the build tab. Processes can be deployed individually or in bulk. Finally, deployment versions can be rolled back in the event of a production bug, which allows you to redeploy the last working version while the process is being corrected. Let's discuss how component dependencies affect deployment. Only the process itself is deployed, so individual components like a connector or a map cannot be deployed. If a change is made in one or more components, then the updated process needs to be deployed. When deployed, the process and all components referenced by the process or other components are bundled together. Processes are deployed independently, and that causes some interesting observations about component versioning. Suppose process 1 and process 2 are deployed and both reference map A. If map A is changed, but only process 1 is redeployed, process 1 is using map A revision 2, while process 2 is still using map A version 1. Different processes can use different versions of the same component. This allows for more granular testing but at the expense of temporary inconsistency. Let's examine how this works with a child or sub-process. Child processes are included in the deployment of the parent process. Now, if you deploy the child process, perhaps to retry documents, then it is a best practice to deploy both the parent and the child process to avoid version mismatch. So what does change management look like in action? Well, first we'll examine what we refer to as normal mode, meaning we are not rolling back our data. Let's assume we have developed a process and we're satisfied in the build tab, which will be development in this scenario. We deploy it to the test environment using our test connectors, and now we have a deployment of test deployment version one 
revision one. The QA team found some issues in our process, so the development team was notified and they make changes to correct the issues. We now have revision two of the process. We deploy a new version of the process which creates test deployment version two, revision two. Once the QA team is satisfied, the process is promoted from test to production by using the copy deployment feature on the deploy tab. This creates production deployment version one. However, notice that we're using revision two of the process. Let's say we need to make some enhancements to the process and create revision three. This gets deployed as test deployment version three, revision three. Once the QA team is satisfied, the process is promoted again, and this creates production deployment version two using revision three. This is what change management would look like if we did not have to roll back. Now let's examine a change management with a production bug. So in this scenario, we encounter a production level bug and need to roll back quickly to resolve the issue. So far, we have created revision one and rolled it out to test in production. We completed additional changes and rolled out revision two to test and production. But then we find out there's a problem in production version two, revision two. We cannot deploy revision three because it hasn't been tested yet. So we can take advantage of Atomsphere's redeploy functionality. We redeploy or roll back to the last good version, which was production deployment version one, revision one. Redeploying gives us production deployment version three based upon process revision one, which was the last known, tested, fully functioning process version. We correct the production bug as part of revision four. Once changes are applied, we can deploy it to our test environment using revision four, and then promote it to production deployment version four using revision four. You can see that the process versions skip around a bit when there is an issue and we need to perform a rollback.